Hello, my name is Judy and I work for the City of Dallas and the Office of Environmental Quality and Sustainability. And thank you for joining me for this program. It's all about how water connects us. And I think you'll find that it connects us maybe in more ways than you might realize. So the mission statement of our team, which is the outreach and engagement team for the Office of Environmental Quality and Sustainability, is to enthusiastically empower Dallas and really everyone to save the earth. So join in with us. There are 70 departments and divisions, actually more than that, that are operated by the city of Dallas. We're one of them, uh, the Dallas uh, Environmental Quality and Sustainability Office. And here's what we do. You can just get an idea about that. If you have any questions, you'll see my email at the, at the end of this, and you're welcome to send me questions about um, what um, this means, what the activities are for these groups. For outreach and engagement, I'm just going to say we can talk to anybody in Dallas. So whether it's a business or um, a homeowners association, we have all kinds of programs and, and different activity levels that we can uh, bring to a meeting. I'd like to show this picture from pro photographer David Worthington. It's of the Trinity River. It was on a summer day, a beautiful summer day. The river was low. Um, you can see we hadn't had any rain, but this river channel is about 30 feet tall. And um, I just want to mention it because people have various opinions about the river. So I'll just say at this point that I've had people call it a drainage ditch um, and just, you know, why don't we just concrete it in? Why do we even bother with it? But it actually is a, a viable a river. It's You can't compare it to like the snake up in the northwest or to the Mississippi, but it's a river nonetheless, and, and I think you'll see, and maybe you might learn um, some different things about what the waters actually do and how they contribute to the entire state of Texas. A main thing that we do in our division is we work on stormwater, stormwater compliance, stormwater training and education. And the reason for that is because basically stormwater is our water. I mean, whatever falls from the sky, the rain, as we know, is basically all the water that we have on this earth and we have to take care of it. And then any kind of urban runoff, if you get a phone call and run in the house and you forget your water's running on the driveway, then that water is going into a storm drain. The city of Dallas is permitted by the state of Texas to release water into a separate sewer system. It's called an MS4 permit and we do have to maintain it and work on it every year. The outreach and engagement team has over 140 goals to meet regarding this permit. So it's one of the reasons that we really thank you today for participating in this program and listening to it, and hopefully you'll learn something from it. This is just a graphic of stormwater runoff. You know how it works, but anything that runs off from a permeable surface, um, uh, a non-permeable surface, I'm sorry, will enter that storm drain here in Dallas. And so there's three systems. There's the system that brings that clean water into your home or your business. And then there's the system that takes your wastewater out. And then there's the storm drain system. So it's a separate system completely from the wastewater system and the potable water system. The history of the Trinity River. I always like to just take a look, uh, you know, back into the history of it. And as with you know, many cities, uh, Dallas formed along the river because of the water in the ponds and the lakes and the creeks. And there's a lot of them here uh, within the city. Even still today, uh, I would venture to say all of us either work or live near some kind of water body, whether it's a creek or a lake. Um, so The Spanish and the French explorers came, um, the city was settled and it was founded and it thrived. And then in 1852, there was this hope that there might be a uh, boat commerce and that went on really until the 1960s. As you can see here by this picture on the left, uh, they did try to bring barges up from the Gulf of Mexico, but this actually took almost a year to get where it, it, it is here in this photograph near um, Dallas. So. It took many years, but they did decide that it just was not uh, viable to try to do that. They talked about dredging it out. They talked about canalizing it and doing a lot of things. But in the end, it was decided that 
pretty much leave the river as it is, except near the downtown area. And you can see here in the picture on the right, um, you see all the meanders. Uh, those are the that's the original flow of the river as it's heading up toward Dallas. You see it's really meanders and you know twists and turns. A, a lot of them very tight. Um, and then you see the outline to the left there that shows where the river was moved. And the reason it was moved is because there were many um, floods through recorded history, but the one in 1908 and the city was really developing ca caused a lot of problems. It caused um, the different parts of the city to be cut off from one another for many months. It took out a lot of bridges and infrastructure that all had to be rebuilt. And that's what made the city leaders and the residents decide, you know what, we need to do something about this. It's probably too late to move the city, but let's move the river. And that's what happened. So you see here some pictures of the flood and just how serious it was. You see another picture here on the left that was taken in 1928 uh, before the river was straightened. You see how close that big meander came up to Houston Street and where the old courthouse is now. And then you can look and see where it is today. And I think most of us know where the Dallas floodway runs and and that piece of the river that, that goes through it. So the levee system is 11 miles of levees on either side, on the east and the west side. They stand about 30 feet tall and they contain uh, the waters when they come out of the, the river channel. So the Trinity today. So there's two streams that come together here in Dallas, the West Fork and the Elm Fork, and then they create a single stream for the river, and then that continues on down for 500 miles approximately to the Gulf of Mexico. You see here a graphic of it. So the water begins in Archer County near North uh, Texas and the Oklahoma border. And it comes, you know, all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico and the river. Um, it covers about 18,000 square miles and 7% of the state. Dallas is a big area, the ninth largest city in the nation, the fourth largest metropolitan area in the nation. So, as I said, almost all of us live or work near a body of water, whether it's a creek, a stream. I know I live by Fish Creek, uh, White Rock Lake, you know, the Trinity River. A lot of people live close to it. It's just the nature of, of things here in Dallas. At the same time, the city is growing at a really rapid rate, approximately 30, 13% a year. And so it's really important for us to continue educating people and so they can see just how vital this water is. Yeah, I've heard it. This water doesn't really do anything for Dallas, and and uh, but I say it does. There are a lot of ecosystems that thrive all along it, uh, even through the area that's been straightened that comes down through the Dallas floodway, and you'll see some pictures and things later on that hopefully will bear that out. So the Trinity River is vital. 54% of the fresh water that hits Galveston Bay comes from the Trinity. That's why it's so important for us to do everything we can in this populated area to keep every piece of litter, every ounce of uh, or drop of pollution of any kind out of the water that might hit a storm drain, because that might ultimately get down to Galveston Bay and then impact the ocean and all the ecosystems along there. Also, once this river leaves the city limits of Dallas, over 50% of the population, the livestock, and of course the wildlife are all getting their water from the river. Now it's going through a processing plant, but still that's where they get their water. So we have um, a great responsibility, not just to ourselves and future generations, but all the people living downstream of us to try to keep it as clean as possible. So it's a big collective working effort. We say that, you know, there's six degrees of separation between people. Well, it's the same thing between a piece of litter and the ocean. It's just so important. Uh, you know, if you can safely stop and pick something out up that's blown out of your vehicle and pickup trucks, you know, try not to put anything, any open containers, any kind of uh, litter, even 
bags of litter should be secured, not just the litter in the bag, but so the bag doesn't blow out of the pickup truck, secure that bag into the bed of the truck. It's also important to keep it away from our environment, out of our landscape, away from our homes and out of our water. So the Trinity really is the lifeblood of Galveston Bay. You know, that fresh water is coming down there. It's entering the salt water. And of course, when that occurs, there's all kinds of dynamics and ecosystems. It's, it's a really important balance. And you know, even uh, a species like the speckled trout, it's kind of like Goldilocks. It doesn't want its water too salty and it doesn't want it too fresh. It wants it just right, just the way it likes it. So if there's not enough fresh, clean water coming down through the channel along the Trinity, it's going to impact that species and other species, the oyster beds, and then the wetlands and the seagrasses as well. Also, there's critical sediment that's coming down through the river. And if that sediment is all contaminated, then we're going to lose our wetlands and our seagrasses. We're already having problems with all of that because of climate change. It's all working together. So as climate change, more storms and all that are eroding the coast coastline, taking the soils away from the wetlands and from the shallow areas of the ocean. The Trinity is actually the lifeblood of this because it's bringing, the hope is, clean sediment and clean fresh water back down into these ecosystems to balance them back out so they can rejuvenate themselves and continue thriving. So let's come back to home. We've all seen things that look like this and anything you can do, say no to single use bags, say no to straws, say no to all kinds of plastic, you know, go ahead and bring your lunch um, in glass containers or plastic reusable containers, those uh, polyurethane bags that you can reuse and, and wash real well. Really try to slow down all the litter, you know, at the holidays, bring out the china, bring out the silverware, try to avoid uh, all the plastics and the paper that you can. It's so important. If you see um, a business where there's trucks or maybe even a construction site where there's this type of fluid that's maybe leaking out of the trucks on a regular basis and it's not a water truck, um, or you see a lot of please call 311 because the city wants to know about this and then go talk to that um, construction manager and see what they can do uh, to stop this kind of pollution that can end up in our water. It's COVID. Um, it is kind of, uh, things are changing. The, di di the dynamic is changing, sorry, tongue tied. But we want to continue trying to clean up even if it's just in our homes. So you can even make a fun uh, situation out of, um, maybe doing a cleanup with your family and your neighbors. If you hike and walk regularly on a trail or just in your neighborhood, take along gloves and a trash sack. And if you see something, just go on and pick it up. Uh, I know you didn't throw it down. I know it's not really your responsibility. There's a lot of ways of looking at it, but if you clean it up, it's not gonna get into the storm drain. It's not gonna further pollute the environment. And that's really gonna be important. Same with fertilizers. Please read the instructions. They're there for a really important reason. Do not apply these things, pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers when it's windy, when it's raining or going to rain, because it's just gonna all end up in our water. It's gonna wash down the storm drain, and we don't want that. Um, you know, These kind of things can promote bacteria and algae growth, which is very harmful to the fish and it depletes the oxygen, so we have fish kills, and then we've got another environmental situation to have to clean up and then have to try to see if we're going to have to you know, restock that water body. So anything you can do to slow that down is very important. Here are some other things um, that you may or may not know about, but there's a lot of services available to you, and I'll just let you read through these. Uh, here are some of the addresses and the locations and the times. Obviously, uh, Due to COVID, operations are being impacted, so please check before you go. Another fun thing might be to, to get uh, several neighbors or family members who have trucks together. You know, pick us, pick a time to go ahead and consolidate everything you might want to take to one of these places. Go do it on, say, a Saturday morning or a Friday when you're off, and then come on back and enjoy um, a meal together. You know, socially distance, however, whatever you need to do to be to be safe. But it's 
it's kind of a fun thing to do. So after you all pitch in and help each other clean some things up in your garages or in your attics, go take care of them and then come back and just have a get together. This is a beautiful picture uh, of the Dallas floodway and, uh, you know, Canada, Canada geese flying out of this um, volunteer wetland. And I understand that last year during the height of COVID, when things were really quiet down in this area, this is near the Ronald Kirk Bridge, uh, 109 Continental Avenue is how you get to this. And it's the Trinity Skyline Trail is a, a trail that's down in this area. There were Rosetta spoonbills that were coming and feeding at dusk. And a lot of the photographers, probably David Worthington, the one you saw from earlier, was down there taking pictures of them as well. Because typically, they don't hang out in town. They like to be in quiet forest glens and ponds. This is another beautiful picture. It was taken near the Trinity River Audubon Center, uh, deep in the heart of the Great Trinity Forest. The Audubon Center is located at 6500 Great Trinity Forest Way right here in Dallas. It has four miles of trail, all kinds of birding adventures, and trainings that you can participate in with people of all ages. And um, the Great Trinity Forest is the largest urban hardwood forest in America. We have 6,200 acres of it. It's all contained within the city of Dallas. And so that's the operative word. There are larger forests, but they're not urban forests. They're not contained within city limits. If you know of one that's bigger, let me know. This is another pro photographer who takes a lot of time uh, and spends um, a lot of time in the Trinity Forest. He caught this snowy egret preening itself uh, along with a bunch of great egrets enjoying the sunset. It's a very beautiful picture. This is the Dallas floodway. It's looking back toward the town and you can see that it's uh, about a mile across. So it's once you get down into it, it's a very big expanse. You can enter it at, as I said, 109 Continental Avenue, uh, Ronald Kirk Bridge, and Felix H. Lozado Gateway. You can also go to 3700 Sylvan Avenue, and there's parking there as well, and the Trammell Co. Park, and see it um, from this perspective. Also, right now, there's monarchs that are flying uh, down through the floodway. They're following the river. They rest along the floodway, and then they continue on their journey down south. I think we probably all have a picture of the of ourselves at the cattle drive, the beautiful bronze sculpture of the steers and the cowboys. But right there is also a natural waterfall. This is a spring fed natural waterfall that's still occurring here in Dallas, just right in the heart of downtown. So hopefully next time you go, stop by and uh, enjoy the waterfall. So outreach and engagement, you know, what do we do? Well, we do a lot and COVID changed a lot. Obviously, these pre-recorded programs is one way it changed us. It gave us an opportunity to partner with a lot of people such as your company and many others. Um, you know, companies that were hit hard by the pandemic still wanted to be involved in environmental training for their employees and we were able to deliver that. Universities as well. I think one of the things that we're the proudest of is the Dallas Public Library virtual programs. We have three of them that we do. All these programs I'm telling you about are free. They're easy to access. Um, the We partner with the Dallas Library and we produce, here we go, um, Earth Kids is one of the series that we produce about two times a month. We have programming especially for kids K through 12. It's at, on Thursdays at four o'clock. And for example, today as I'm recording this, uh, there's a water conservation program. So uh, be looking out for in the future at, you can go to dallascityhall.com and select the calendar listing and you'll see what's coming up for Earth Kids. On Mondays, except on holidays, we have Grow With Us, which is all about urban agriculture, growing things, your landscape, healthy eating. And again, you can join us for that. On Thursdays, about three times a month at noon, and these programs are all for one hour, we have Earth Day every day because we want every day to be Earth Day and to be celebrated by all of us uh, continuing our great behaviors that are good for the environment. And we basically mimic the focus areas that we talk about and have programs such as coming up October the 14th, will be airing from the State Fair and John Watts, the entomologist for the Texas Discovery Garden, will be hosting Marvelous Monarchs and how to tag a monarch butterfly. 
We also are very proud of the 27th Waterwise Landscape Tour. If you would like to participate, it's free, it's easy. Go to SaveDallasWater.com. Please enter your landscape. We'd love to have you join us and just see just how far you might get in the competition. And then on the 23rd, we have wonderful guest speakers coming up from 10 until 12 o'clock, like Lori Nesbitt. She's a local landscape architect, and she can give you a lot of great information about really how to take care of your soil and make it fabulous. Branch Out Dallas is a program that uh, the, we offer. Right now, I understand that if you haven't already signed up for a free tree, the only ones that are left are the sycamores, and they're going fast. So uh, they were hoping to be able to keep the registration open until September 30th, but as soon as the last tree is spoken for, they will be closing down that registration. If you just go out on the internet and just type in Branch branch out Dallas, it'll take you right to this link that you see here on the screen. Here's the flyer for the landscape tour. We're just so proud of it. We've been hosting it and sponsoring it for 27 years. And I want to invite you to our October Rooted In program. It's about rain gardens. It's on October 9th. It's a virtual program from 10 until noon and it's free. It can tell you maybe about a new enclave area that you can create a new garden room you can create at your home in in your landscape so it's all it's important for all of us to do our part i know we think of wild spaces and the environment and nature out there somewhere else we think of it as big bend country or yellowstone national park or the beautiful aspen forests of colorado in reality it's right here it's right outside your door it's in your yard it's in your your garden beds and your landscaped areas. And it's all throughout the city. So please join me in doing everything you can. Uh, keep on doing the good work that you're doing for the environment. Pick up every piece of paper. Uh, do not put anything in the water. We just want it to be clean, pristine. And if you see anything, that really anything at all, anything, any kind of service the city can provide, just call 311. So with that, just thank you so much for your time. Um, you can, as I say, call 311 or here you go. You're welcome to email me with any of your questions at Judy Schmidt at DallasCityHall.com or GreenDallas at DallasCityHall.com. Thank you for your time. <laughs>